let's talk about an important subject. If you want to work with concrete, or let's say you want to have more success when you work with concrete, you want to be able to make better things and have them be stronger and not break and just more overall success with the things that you're trying to make with concrete. Water reducer or super plasticizer. It's a little bit more challenging. It's not the very first thing that you would take on when you're learning to work with concrete, but it should be one of the first things that you take on when you're trying to learn to work with concrete better. There are a host of advantages, but to summarize it, when you place whatever kind of concrete you make, mortar or concrete or some sort of specialty thing, no matter what you're doing, it would probably benefit the strength of your mix to be drier than what you're actually mixing it. And the reason why you add the amount of water that you do isn't because it's optimum for the concrete or for the mortar, it's optimum for the placement viscosity that you need for whatever it is you're making, whether you're pouring like a mold that you're casting or you're pouring something big like a foundation for a home and there's a lot of steel in there and you could end up with voids if the, the concrete is too stiff and if you add enough water to make it liquidy enough to flow into all of those voids you drastically compromise the strength it's something that a lot of novice concrete workers aren't really aware of it, adding more water doesn't just a little bit decrease the finished strength it massively compromises the finished strength and the ideal amount of water is probably a lot less than what you think it is. So a water reducer, super plasticizer product, is something that you're going to add. It's going to give you that viscosity that will aid in your placement, but it will not compromise the finished strength. When used properly, experts say that super plasticizers or water reducers have no negative benefits on the finished product at all. Of course, you have to use it properly. So let's talk a little bit more about what water reducers and super plasticizers are, so you can learn a little bit about how to work with them and maybe apply this knowledge to the concrete that you're making at home. A plasticizer is a low range water reducer and it's going to allow you to replace approximately 5% of the water in your mix with this plasticizer product. 5% isn't a whole lot, it's not gonna do a whole lot for your concrete mix. And so that's not really something that you're going to be dealing with a whole lot. You're going to move right into the high range water reducer. And these are the ones that have the ability to replace 12 to 40% of the water in your mix. And so if you're trying to visualize this, just you made a mix, it's however wet it is, picture you added 40% more water. Well. <laughs> It'd probably be pretty soupy, right? And that's the idea with this stuff. Not necessarily soup, but you want to be able to thin out that viscosity as much as possible without compromising the strength. And, and this is how you do it. It's a little bit tricky. There's a couple of things you need to know, but ultimately it's not that hard to do. It's not that expensive and it's something that you can definitely start doing. Low water to cement ratio. Those are really important words. It's something you need to embrace when you're going to be working with concrete as a hobby or even professionally for that matter. The less water that you use, the better for the strength of the concrete. I know that doesn't sound right, but it is. The amount it needs is very small. It needs that small amount, but it needs it over a prolonged period of time. That's kind of like the optimum hydration process for concrete. And we don't really do that when we're making it at home. We kind of just give it way too much all at once. And if it's hot, it can evaporate quickly. And it's not ideal, but a plasticizer is going to allow us to make it a much thinner product, not compromise the strength. It can even do things like be a super plasticizer, but also a concrete retarder. So it's going to prolong the set time. That's what I've got here. I've got some super plasticizer plus retarder, which is, I mean, I bought this has to be 15 years ago, might be 20 years ago. I can't remember. I just remember I found a supplier because if you're like me, a lot of this stuff is kind of hard to find, and I'm, especially 20 years ago at the hobbyist level, it's very difficult to find. So when I finally found some, I just kind of went to town and I bought a whole bunch of stuff and I had super plasticizers and water reducers and all kinds of stuff. I don't remember what I spent. Like, it's not like it was a lot of money. 
20 years later, I still have so much of this stuff around. I have more downstairs. It's not that much money. You can pick some up. I don't recommend keeping it around for 20 years like I do. But even though I make a lot of concrete stuff and I work with concrete all the time, a little goes a long way. It's something that you can more or less kind of buy and have like a year's supply on hand. You probably won't use it in every mix that you do, but especially for things like casting or anything where you need like a flowable product, that's where this stuff really shines. So what is this stuff? Well, I don't know. It says water reducer on the bag, but it's a polycarboxylate. Oh, okay. Well, that explains everything. So what's a polycarboxylate? It makes the concrete wetter. It, okay, it's not going to help. Polycarboxylate is a linear polymer with a high molecular mass. No, okay. Well, it's a cone-shaped polymer with an anionic backbone and several non-ionic pendant chains made of polyethylene glycols. Polymer backbone? What, what is that? Polymer backbones contain a nitrogen-containing functional group plus a metallite anion bonded to the nitrogen in the functional group via ion pairing through Coulomb attraction. It makes the concrete wetter. Moving on puts a little Coulomb attraction between friends. So we're all up to speed on our PhD thesis on the molecular construction of comb-shaped polymers. Okay, it makes the concrete wetter, but this stuff sounds pretty scary. Is it? Is it really dangerous? Actually, it's pretty eco-friendly as far as that kind of thing goes, and you might actually have some in your house already. In fact, you probably do. Polycarb oxalates are what replaced phosphates in things like dishwasher detergent or liquid laundry soap. So this is something that is used for general purposes around your home because of its ability to chelate against things sticking. Like this is how it works, is it makes stuff really liquidy and it doesn't stick and that's why you don't get calcium scale on your dishes and all the food particles don't stick back on when they come out of your dishwasher. If you didn't use stuff like phosphates or polycarboxylates, then you would have more of a problem with that and ain't nobody got time for dirty forks. So that's why we use this stuff and it is actually fairly eco-friendly. Now, it doesn't mean I want to go and breathe the stuff in. I think that my lungs are as super plasticized as I can handle. So I am going to go ahead and gear up when I mix some. I recommend that you do too. You should just probably take that approach across the board when you decide to work with concrete as a hobby. If you were rolling the dice and you had to mix concrete or something potentially toxic a single time, I don't know, maybe you'd get lucky, maybe you'd get away with it. But when you make the decision to start to learn to work with this stuff on a regular basis, we're, we're not rolling the dice anymore. For sure, you're going to be exposed to too much of pretty much all of it. So just go ahead right in the beginning and establish a protocol of safety. Protect yourself, glasses, gloves wear a half mask cartridge ventilator, things like that, it's worth taking the time. You don't want to end up with long-term problems from something that you're exploring as a fun hobby on the side. So before I gear up and we start mixing this stuff together, I want to talk a little bit about how we go about knowing how much of this product to use in a concrete or mortar mix. So right here, I have 685 grams of Portland cement. Type general use if you're interested to know. So right here, I have 10%. So this is about 68 grams. That represents the maximum amount of super plasticizer product that you would want to use in ratio with your cement. And again, when we're talking about mixed design for concrete or mortar or anything like that, it's always based on a ratio. It doesn't matter if I'm talking about like a little plastic cup full or a shovel full or a five gallon bucket or a 88 pound bag. As long as you keep the ratio proportional, this works. This scales all the way up from bench top here all the way to full scale construction. So that's what we're looking here is 10%. 
So what's the minimum amount that you could add? Well, I mean, you could add none at all, but you're not going to get much benefit out of that. So half a percent by weight is the minimum that you can add. And the thing about it is, is probably you're not going to need to do this. Like I'm going to make a mix for you here using just some sand and cement. I don't think I'm going to need to use all this because that's pretty aggressive. I don't want to have something that is flat liquid. Like it needs to have some substance to it. That is one of the problems that you can encounter when you're working with super plasticizer. You can overdo it. If you add too much super plasticizer, you can picture in your mind exactly what it would look like. It's just super soupy concrete. And what happens is all of your aggregates, your gravel and your sand, well, they'll just kind of sink down to the bottom because there's no resistance to it at all. Like just picture having a glass of water and pouring some sand into it. Wouldn't you know, the sand sinks to the bottom. So you can definitely overshoot it with something like this. What I like to do, especially when you're talking about, you know, concrete as a hobby, smaller batch sizes, is I like to make something that I consider to be, this would be a nice, really strong mix. I mean, it's no good for placement because it's way too dry, but it's definitely not overwatered and it's going to be nice and strong. That's when I start adding my super plasticizer. So I add some of that product, I mix it in, and here's the really important thing. You have to leave it and then come back. Maybe there's other people that have other experiences. This has been my experience over 20 years of working with this product. If I mix it like I would normally do and then immediately begin to place and finish, do whatever it is I'm doing with this, I'll end up with this weird cheetah spot pattern in the finish. And I can see it's relating to hydration. It's tiny little flecks of this super plasticizer which haven't distributed fully in the mix and they're adding too much hydration to these little localized areas and you get this cheetah pattern and i thought that you know well i've ruined all this stuff and i just threw it into the junk pile and i checked months later and hey it actually looked good all that cheetah pattern disappeared and other than some localized spots where i said it was uh, slightly overhydrated, which caused a blemish blemish in the finish it actually still works so you can you can it's a little bit forgiving. You can make some mistakes and still get away with it. But what I like to do, and I found to be very effective, is I'll take my mix, I'll make it, I'll mix it all together, and then I'll go for a coffee. 10, 15 minutes. I'll come back, I'll mix it up some more, and now I do whatever I'm going to do. And whenever I do that, I don't have that cheetah spot pattern anymore. I don't have over hydration happening in localized areas. So maybe you should try experimenting as well. In fact, I definitely recommend that when you're working with concrete as a hobby, just try stuff out. It's the best way to learn, absolutely secondary to this YouTube channel. But I'm going to go ahead and get geared up so we can mix this together, learn a little bit. Now I'm going to show you a dry mix. I'm going to add some super plasticizer. And right before our eyes, like internet magic, it's going to turn into this very viscous, soupy concrete mix. But the strength won't be compromised with the finished product. It's dry, but it's not so dry that you can't make a baseball with it. Baseballs look funny where I come from. So this would make some really strong concrete. But if I'm trying to cast this into a mold, forget about it. I only added one third, maybe. It's about half. Let's give that 10 minutes to do its thing, and then we'll be back. I'll be 
coming over here again later. We're back, not quite 10 minutes, almost. It's definitely a little bit thinner, but I can tell it's not enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more right now. I would call that maybe 80% of that. I can weigh it after as well. Okay, we're gonna give it another 10 minutes here. Looking pretty soupy. It's only been about five minutes, but I want to mix it around a little better. I, I'm mixing it in this vessel purely so that you can see it just a little bit better. Um, I wouldn't normally mix like this. There are definitely more effective ways. I mean, I guess it's not the worst, but it's, it's not the best. How can I show this to you? Thusly. Okay. So, I can't make my baseball anymore. But, that's good because we have something here with a much better placement viscosity for casting or, I mean, all sorts of applications. That other stuff was great if we had left it just like that for the strength that we'd achieve. This being the superior placement viscosity, but it doesn't compromise the strength. We get the best of both worlds here. It's mixed in pretty well, but I do want to give it a couple minutes more so that we can see how much we've achieved there. This is, I already can tell, like this is good for pretty much everything that I would use it for or even dryer. I never need anything this wet because you're going to raise a lot of water to the surface, but I'm going to give it a couple more minutes to finish doing what it was doing. When I come back, I'll have the mask on again, and what the heck, let's go ahead and add that last little bit in there, and we'll just see how far we can take it following the uh, recommendations for a maximum of 10% by weight of the uh, super plasticizer versus your Portland cement component. Back in another five, I suppose. Here we are back again. It's... It's almost self-leveling at this point, but we'll go ahead and add the rest of that. While we're back, the soup is almost ready. Well, it definitely had an impact on the viscosity of this mix. There, there's no doubt about that. This is actually a pretty usable viscosity, but I suspect that it's going to thin out a little bit more still. I don't normally mix tabletop here. I would use a mixer or a, you know, a paddle attachment on a drill, something like that. And you're going to get a better job distributing that uh, water reducer through there. Some water reducers you can add to the water at the beginning some you can't obviously that would help to disperse it if it's one that you can there's a lot of different kinds out there just follow the instructions for the product you buy and you're not going to have any problems so we've got a pretty wet soupy mix here it's going to finish very strong in my case this is going to take quite a long time to set up because my product also has a retarder in it, which is not something that it has to have, but it is an optional when you're looking at super plasticizers. I hope you found this information helpful.